Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. I already dealt with one type of assimilation. I already mentioned the direction of flow of influence. It may be confusing because it means the opposite to the same. So I also said regressive assimilation can also be referred to as anticipatory assimilation. And I said that all of these nasalizations are partial contiguous regressive assimilation. And the reason it is like non-intuitive to some people is because they think, oh, we have a vowel which becomes similar to the following consonant, right? So this is, becomes more similar to this. So it should be progressive. Why is it regressive? But no, it is not what becomes something. It is what influences what. So the following sound influences the previous sound. So the direction of influence is regressive. It's going backward. That's why it is referred to as regressive. Once you look at it this way, then you would know. You remember I, I said assimilation can happen inside a word or it can happen between two words, okay? 10 boys. So if I say this slowly, I'm saying 10 boys. If this is the pace of speech, I'm enunciating very clearly 10 boys. But what happens in rapid speech you see the words? The first word ends in na. Let's look at our lovely chart. Look, this is a na, which is an alveolar nasal. And when I say alveolar nasal, even if I don't say voiced, it still means na because there is no voiceless alveolar nasal. Then you have bilabial, 10 boys, right? So this na, in rapid speech, what happens is that people tend to say 10 boys, 10 boys. So instead of saying 10 boys, they say 10 boys. And how do you justify that? Well, in anticipation of B, the N shifts to here. So the, the place of articulation shifts. It becomes 10 boys. Now the question is, okay, what is happening here? Assimilation is happening here. What kind of assimilation? It is partial or total? Of course it is partial. It would be total if 10, if ne became ba. If it became teb boys, that would be total. But it doesn't become teb boys. It becomes ten boys. So it's partial assimilation and it is contiguous because it's between two adjacent sounds. And it is regressive because it is ba that influences the previous sound. So the direction of influence is going backward, hence regress. Partial contiguous regressive assimilation. Now you might ask, okay, I know what regressive assimilation is. What about progressive assimilation? But I'm going to make it more interesting. I'm going to give an example from Persian. In Persian, the word for handle is dasteh. If you ask a Persian speaker, what is the word for handle? They would say das te. But the same Persian speaker, when they speak fast, they do something interesting. They pronounce it as das se. You have seta becoming sesa. So, okay, what is happening here? Of course, we know that it's total assimilation, right? Why is it total? Because one sound becomes totally the other. Is it contiguous? Yes, because it's between two adjacent sounds. But is it regressive or progressive? You tell me. Yeah, it is progressive because if you look at this, you would totally see that the following sound becomes similar to the previous sound. It means the direction of influence is from previous to the following. It is forward. So the word das te, handle, becomes das se. And what happens for this to become that is that the, the sound t becomes You need to know that there's other terms that if you look at other books, you might see that 
instead of progressive, they use other terms like preservative. Because the thing is, you preserve a feature or more than one feature as you go through the following sounds. Or some people might call it lagging because you lag it on. They call it lagging assimilation or lag assimilation. They all mean the same thing. But I'm going to consist be consistent in the use of regressive versus progressive. Because first of all, they, they sound like each other instead, except for their prefix. They are aggressive, it's regressive or progressive. Second of all, there is an explicit emphasis on the direction. I know it's initially more counterintuitive, but to overcome that, you need to stop and think why those terms are used for this. And the fact that you stop and think it gives you a moment of clarity that once you internalize that, it's going to be very useful, very helpful in the analysis. I'm going to give another example from Persian. And the word for theft is dozdi. And when you speak fast, you would say dozi. Again, what happens is the sound z influences the following sound. So the direction of influence is forward, hence progressive. And the assimilation is so that you would have the following sound totally changing to become similar to the previous sound and hence total. So progressive, total, and this assimilation happens between two contiguous sounds. So hence total contiguous progressive assimilation. Now I'm going to give another example of progressive assimilation and I'm going to give an example from the Polish language. The word for flower in Polish according to the alphabet, it's the W is a V. It's not like English, it's not a W. It's more like German, V. And so this, the way it's supposed to be pronounced is Kvyat, but it is not pronounced Kvyat. Instead, it is pronounced Kvyat. Now you see that the sound K and the sound V become the sound K and the sound F. I'm already telling you that this is assimilation. Why do I say that? I'm claiming that one sound becomes more similar to the other. And how can I justify that claim? Let's look at this. You have k here, which is a voiceless velar plosive, right? It doesn't change. It is only the following sound, which is va, which is voice labiodental fricative, becomes voiceless labiodental fricative. So voiced becomes voiceless, k is voiceless. So the voicelessness of k flows forward onto v and kv becomes kf. So this is how I can justify this. So first of all, it is flowing forward, hence progressive. And I said it's a simulation. Is it contiguous? Yes, it is. Is it partial or total? It's partial because only the voicing feature, one feature, changes. The sound doesn't totally become the other, it, but it becomes partially similar to the other. It becomes somehow similar. So that's an example of partial contiguous progressive assimilation.